Welcome to episode 3 of Opening the Package, Toy Collecting with Ian Brazy Cannon. Okay, in this episode, I would like to focus on an aspect I kind of hinted at in the first episode. And that was when I um, talked about collecting packaging. What I call, um, what I'm talking about tonight is what I call the non-toy aspect of toy collecting. This includes packaging, um, collector booklets, comics, instructions, you know, things like that that aren't necessarily the toy, but they came with the toy, so they become part of collecting the toys. It's an aspect I've enjoyed and loved because of so much stuff they've done to it. We'll start tonight by talking about one of the more, I consider, you know, famous aspects of it, which came about in the early 80s. Now, in the basically late 70s into early 80s, there was pretty much one toy line that dominated. Nothing else came close, everything, you know, the, it changed the whole toy market. Of course, it, the movie had changed the whole movie market, so, you know, the, oh, I'm talking about Star Wars. It came out, it changed everything. You know, that motion pictures changed, the toy industry changed, everything changed because of Star Wars. So, here, here Kenner is releasing these little 3 and 3 fourth inch figures, which were huge. Everyone had to have them, they were selling like mad. And so the competitors were trying to get them on the market. Well, Hasbro looked into it and said, well, what we should try to do is bring back our G.I. Joe line, which was the 12-inch action figures from about 20 years before. Although I believe they, were, uh, they, they changed enough, I believe it did go through to the early 70s, but then it kind of died out. But, it, you know, Hasbro had the marketing still and said, okay, well, let's try and bring it back. And so at the time, due to um, the laws... They could not do a cartoon show. It was it would still be a couple years. That's why G.I. Joe cartoon didn't start until the actual second year of the G.I. Joe toy line. They couldn't do it the first year. So what they were looking for was, hey, what outlets do we have? Well, comic books. So they approached Marvel Comics and they say, hey, listen, we have we want to bring back G.I. Joe. We'd like you guys to do a comic book crossover for it to help us promote it. Well, the um, writer, who was a staff writer for Marvel at the time, Larry Hama, who had, apparently a little while before, presented a concept called Nick, the son of Nick Fury, Nick Fury Jr., or something like that. Basically, Nick Fury's son, which started his own little military team. Uh, the idea was scrapped, but he had still worked on it, and some of those ideas would creep into the G.I. Joe. Well... When Hazel presented the idea, Larry's like, okay, who are your characters? And Hazel's kind of like, well, we have the infantryman. We have the bazooka launcher guy. We have the heavy machine gunner. We have, you know, very generic, you know, this is our jeep driver. This is be our um, pilot. This will be our secret agent. The names were really, really generic. Why? Because that's how G.I. Joe was. If you look back, that was G.I. Joe. And he was a pilot, he was a marine, he was a soldier, he was a paratrooper. He was all these generic things. He wasn't a character per se. So, Larry came up and said, hey, no, let's take this to the next step. Okay, who are they fighting? Hasbro had no idea. They're like, fighting? What do you mean? And so I was like, no, they need an enemy, they need a villain, they need someone to fight. And that's basically how the whole organization Cobra came about is... Larry Hamill said, no, we need someone to fight if you want to do this right. And so he, you know, helped them invent Cobra. Well, then he said, okay, if we're going to do this, why don't we go and, you know, if we're going to make him each a character, let's include that on the back of the package somehow. And so what they came up with was the file cards. Every um, G.I. Joe figure made ever... Of, you know, for the 3 and 3 fourth inch line, it, it, it has spread onto the, um, when they re-released the 12 inch, got a file card. Now, the idea of the file card is you could put all the information on the character. Um, now, they did change it a little, but as you can see, originally, at the top was what they were. In this case, the commando. Codename, Snake Eyes. Picture here. Um, in Snake Eyes' case, a lot of his stuff is classified, which he w was, you know, supposed to be this mysterious character. We've learned since then in the comics. But anyways, you have, you know, 
uh, his real name, military specialities, birthplace, rank. Then you get a brief um, description of the character, talking about who they are, their past to some extent, um, characteristics of them, you know, basic information. A lot of time they'll include um, what weapons they're familiar with and stuff like that. Then at the bottom, you most of the time got a quote from like other soldier, the commanding officer, and such like that. And as you can see, there was a progression. I think I had several incarnations. And then here they they switched it around at one point to putting the name at the top, then the um, the um, speciality at the bottom. And you know you can see it. They did it for just about every character. Well, for every character, I'm saying just about you know, including the bad guys. There's Destro. We're gonna do the Cobras here in a moment. Zartan, another Destro, Cobra Commander. Now, you know, these things, it's, you know, clip and save, it said. And obviously, I did. All my friends did. These were just kind of cool things to cut off the back. And say, oh, wow, you know, we got the file cards, you got to keep them. Um, and gave you all the information. Now, as you can also see, they went from a tan color to a gray over the years. Then, near the end of it, they did even kind of weirder colorations. Um, of course, at the end, they were doing a lot of speciality things. Here is the um, headhunter from the was it crime fighters, or drug fighters, and it's purple. You have the trial card stuff, and you have like an additional little thing here. It got more into these got less and less technical. Now, all, all the original ones were written by Larry Hammond himself. He wrote those as he was doing comics, so he was doing you know dual jobs. But it helped him have the characters better in comics. If you read those the comics, they really each had great characteristics to them. They were individuals, and um, they got kind of, like I said, they got kind of strange. When they remember, if you look, they now have the equipment lists and showing you where the numbers are. A bit weird. Um, they even got smaller near the end. End. I mean, this is one of the last ones, and very uninteresting at that point. And. You can obviously, like, here's one of the last basic styles they did. Um, Snake Eyes, of course, I think that is the very last Snake Eyes they did. That was for Ninja Force. Um, so, you know, that was just a cool collectible thing. Is to have the file card, have the information, and be able to, you know, look him up and say, oh, yeah, this is what he's like. And, you know, that caught on. Every other toy line try to copy it. Well, not every, but most of them. Um, the Hasbro also did Transformers, and of course they had the tech files for Transformers. Now, um, I don't have any originals with me. I'd have to... I'm sure I have some somewhere. It's kind of weird. But what I have is I have Generation 2. What Generation 2 was, was in the 90s. Um, they tried to bring Transformers back. That started off being redecos of the classic ones, followed by a bunch of new ones that really weren't up quality-wise to what they should have done. But this is what the um, the cards looked like for Generation Two. Uh, Generation One cards were similar in some respects, had all the same information, but this whole big thing was actually this, was only a small box next to this. Then this was lines. And you couldn't read it with the naked eye. You had to have a special decoder that came with the larger Transformers to read it to see what their actual powers and stuff were. Uh, it was kind of a cool little thing. And, you know, you obviously, you know, wanted to collect them. And I personally, I think the Generation 1 cards look much better than Generation 2. These just really aren't that interesting. But Hasbro kept it going. But like I said, other toy companies did it as well. You have, you have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which were a bit sillier. They did, you know, they did, um, give a lot more basic information of um, statistics and stuff. Uh, you know, height, weight, and age, which were not on the GI Joe ones. Then, the, um, you know, character description. But this was a little sillier because these toys were the concept being sillier. And as you can see, you know, more cartoonish characterization. And of course, you know, good guys and bad guys got the same treatment. So, you know, everyone was doing them. You could find more examples. Now, a um, more interesting one was the Secret Wars attempt at doing them, which basically what you got, you got 
you know, the basic information and all that, character profile, then you got a little mini comic on the side of them. So, you know, and they did these with all the characters. Cap, Iron Man, Daredevil, there we go, you got Spidey. Spidey and see Doc Ock behind them. So, you know, they just, a funner way to do it, and like I said, in this case it makes sense to have the mini comic, because these are comic books. So, well, you know, that kept going even into the 90s when, for some unknown reason, I, I don't know if this was really that good of an idea because it didn't last, um, Star Wars tried to do the same thing. When they released the new Star Wars line, they said, hey, let's try and do the file card thing. Yes, I clipped them. They're not the best. They're not the most interesting. For one thing, we knew these characters already. We had seen the movies and we knew what they were like. We didn't necessarily need the file cards. I think the you know it was kind of a silly thing to do. We you know obviously I clipped them and kept them, but that's me. Um, others wouldn't have bothered. I don't think they went over as well at that time because well for one thing they don't do them anymore, and I think that's because they realized it was didn't really make that much sense. Instead. Star Wars did, kept trying different things. One of the cooler things they did during the expanded universe was you, you have the package and on the back. Ta-da! You have a little 3D play, display playset kind of thing. Not the best. Kind of cool, but you know, in this case it's very cartoonist, but it's based off of this one itself is Luke from a um, comic book. And so it's kind of comic book. Most of them are in this case. You, know, you get some more interesting ones. This one's based off a video game, and you kind of see that looks more realistic, really. It looks more, you know, there's still an animated feature, but it's um, based off of video games and cartoons or comic books. So, you know, they, they tried quite a few different things over the years. Uh, and here, all right, remember I was trying to show you how the packaging changed? This is pretty much what they were giving us. Well, for, yeah, we'll go with Leia. For the packaging. It's boring. So in the back, not too much going on. It's boring. And you can see the file card there. So, oh, let's see. Apparently earlier, they had even more standard looking file cards. I'd forgotten that. But if you look on the first batches, they were much more standard looking. So, you know, that... that to me, these are boring cards. These were not as good as some of the other stuff we saw before that in the 80s. But still, you had the file cards. You had stuff, you know, they tried to do something. Um, and, of course, by the time they were doing the Episode 1 stuff, pretty much they'd given up on trying to do anything. In this case, you get the mail-in offer on the back, but that's about it. Um, Max, that wasn't mail-in offer. Never mind. You get the, ooh, the contact thing, which was a bomb. It was basically, you had, okay, each figure came with this little microchip. You had to buy a whole separate thing just to show what was on the microchip, and it wasn't that exciting. Um, they did it for a very short time. It bombed, and uh, they've not tried to revise that one, but they, they, they kept trying different gimmicks. Um, until, you know, they... I, it comes back, it comes and goes now. So that's kind of the file card, um, a little showing of the his, you know, some of the stuff they do with the backs of the packaging for the figures themselves. Now the other thing, I was, um, uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier was instructions. Now, um, you have lots of toys that come with instructions, and they're kind of a cool thing to have. This is for. Zoids, Technozoids, which Technozoids really were just Zoids, but brought out again. A lot of the Technozoids had been done years before, just um, they kept changing the name trying to revise them. But so this is a Technozoid instruction sheet. Um, got bigger one for the bigger guys, Iron Kong, and of course Battlesaurus. And you know, one of the reasons to keep instructions like those. Um, especially for something you have to build, is um, because oh, it falls apart. You want to rebuild it. 
Here I have the instructions for my only original Zord. He was one of the first Zords released. I have the instructions so far. I have him. He's cool. Zords will wind up towards you built yourself self if you don't know what Zords were. But this, you know, obviously goes through it step by step so you can rebuild it accurately. I also have instructions for the Secret Wars playset. Ooh, this wasn't too exciting of a playset. The Secret Wars Turbo Cycle. And, you know, those are basic instructions. Those are fairly common. Nothing too spiffy. But, we're going back to G.I. Joe now, because G.I. Joe did another really interesting thing. Okay. So here you have the instructions. Okay, you can see how it's all supposed to be built. Then on the reverse side, you have the blueprints. These were cool. I, at one point, actually had my walls decorated with these. But, you know, it shows the vehicle from all sides. Top, side, front. Then it tells you, you know, the important parts of it. Just, you know, you want to identify, oh, that's what that is. That's what, you know. So these were another cool little thing to say. Similar to the file cards. These are the blueprints of the vehicle. So you can actually kind of have a better, you know, idea of what the vehicle was. And, you know, they did tons of them. And every vehicle came with one. And they still, um, I think they're still trying to do it, because the more recent ones I've gotten, like I picked up the new version of the Rattler a few years back, and it had it. I picked up the Night Attack Copper, which was a whole new vehicle, and they were still doing it. So, uh, I, I haven't picked up anything in a couple years, but at least up until a couple years ago, they were still doing the blueprints. So, you know, and that, that, these are so cool, because, you know, the beyond the instructions, these are something more than just the instructions, which I always love it when the toy company comes up and says, hey, let's take it up to the next level. Oh, there's another file card I even have for the Alien Queen. So, it, you know, like I said, everyone was trying to do it. Now, going off the Alien one, um, they did a, something that wasn't too uncommon, and that was mini comic books. Now, the most famous of them are the Masters of the Universe mini comic books, which I do have a couple, but I'm not sure where they are. But obviously, you know, the, the little stories, quite often like in the Aliens case, um, you'll notice they're numbered, and they actually do kind of tell a continuing story from one to the other. To the other. Now, um, some did that, some, you know, Masters of the Universe, each one was separate, uh, but it, it's however, you know, the company wants to do it. They tell that they were fun little things because they gave you kind of an idea of the world these um, tours are inhabiting. And so, you know, you could build from that and play off of that. And here is Transformers Beast Wars from before the cartoon show came out. They were developing the cartoon show, but they put the line out and they did one little comic book that didn't fit in at all with the cartoon show. It only came with the Optimus Primal Megatron 2 pack. And it was just a little promotional thing, showing the characters and stuff. But with the cartoon show camera, it changed the whole thing anyways. So, and other, no. Go back to instructions real quick. Because, you know, instructions are an important part. But especially in the um, toy lines that are specifically made to be built and taken apart. Um, I have tons of Lego instructions. I also have... The old connects. Constructs, I mean. The old constructs. I have all the instruction sheets from them. So if I wanted to, I could get out the constructs, which I still have, and build all these things again. But, you know, I, for a while I was really into constructs, and I'm glad I kept the instructions, because once more, this is a little collectible thing in and of itself, which most people might not have kept. I, and this is, like I said, the kind of stuff I love. So, going on to... Oh, see... Lego Instruction Book. I knew I had one up here. But I have a whole drawer of the Lego Instruction Books. I don't get, you know, as soon as I built the set, I take these and I put these aside so that if they get damaged, I can easily hunt it down and rebuild it if I want to. And so, i got tons of these. I'm not even sure how many. Then, the one of the things I wish, wish, wish they would start doing again today is good collector books. Basically, in the 80s, 70s and 80s, 
every toy line had one of these. This is the original G.I. Joe one for the first year. Colorful, great. You open it up, you are given the complete, complete line of toys. Complete line of toys for what was out. And of course it did include some special stuff that were um, exclusive and stuff that um, weren't in here. Oops, I folded it wrong. But um, you got the overall collection that was widely available. You know, all the, all the characters, all the vehicles, you don't get that nowadays. If you get a book like this, unless it's a um, specific one where uh, there's some game ones that have the whole line, but they're collect they are selling those as collectible game pieces kind of thing. Your general action figure line, you will get only a sampling of what is available nowadays. And so depressing, because these were so cool. I mean... And G.I. Joe did them every year. His third year, which was kind of cool, it was Duke and Zartan. Well, this one's kind of falling apart. But, you know, they changed it around every year. G.I. Joe was definitely um, really good about being creative with them. You had the nice decal for the year. And you open it up. And, you know, depending on how they wanted to do it, you got kind of like the special stuff. And then you got more of the basics. You would always have there with all the figures, then it would kind of spread out and group the vehicles together differently. This year was the year the um, flying aircraft carrier came out, which I never had. I've only seen a couple. But, you know, so these books were called. Everyone did, pretty much everyone did them. Although I don't think Masters of the Universe ever did. I don't recall seeing one of those, but G.I. Joe, Transformers, Star Wars, you know, most of your toy lines were doing a booklet like this. And like I said, they were just so cool. And I got, I think I have most of them up until like year eight or nine. But they, like I said, they change the style every year just a bit. They start doing the figures in a way that really um, showed them individually. You know, all the vehicles. Uh, once in a while they would do, they started doing Cobra on one side, G.I. Yeah, Joe on the other kind of thing. But, but they, you know, they played around with the format. They did a little cool collectible because of it. Now, the other interesting thing you would get at times with those, oh, here's one of the later ones. Now, this was an interesting one, because they kind of stopped taking pictures of the toys and did um, cartoon versions of them. But also, at this time, Jet Go was doing the Street Fighter. So you have you know, all the Street Fighter stuff, because they were officially an off grants of G.I. Joe. Kind of weird. I never quite got that. But I'm... Not the one doing the marketing. So, going with that, oh, the comics. See, I got a whole box full of stuff over here of all sorts of things. Construct. Oh, this is kind of cool. They did Robotech model kits. And this is. God, everything's falling apart. Sorry. This is um, a collector guide to the model kit. So, in all the model kits that were out at the time. So you can tell this stuff's been old and I've looked through it. It is literally falling apart in my hands. Wow. So, if I could find one thing real quick. If not, I will move on. I think I have some. Oh, I was going to talk about that I can't find. Okay, one popular thing that was going on during um, this time frame was mail-away offers. Basically, one thing Hasbro did was they took, um, well, first, the, um, the more famous first ones would have been the um, Transformer mail-away offers which were the, called the Reinforcements from Cybertron. Now, Reinforcements from Cybertron um, were, were a few um, Transformer figures that didn't fit into the scales, you know, the, the way they divided up the figures when they took them from the other lines, because Transformers originally came from several different lines and were given characterizations and um, 
turned into what we know as Transformers. Well, there were a few of them that they decided they wanted to put out there, but didn't, but weren't going to do retail-wise because they weren't quite, you know, they, they weren't the mini ones and they were a little smaller than the standard. So they called them Reinforcement Cybertrons and mailed away. You were given a book that looked um, very similar to your basic collector guide. And the book had a list of the stuff you could order um, through the mail. Well, as um, Hasbro went along, one of the things they did was they would take some of the older figures and vehicles and stuff and make it so you could mail away for them. And they would have whole um, books that, like I said, just like, they, they looked a lot like your um, figure guides, but they would have the mail away offers in them saying, you know, so much money would get you this figure. And they um, ask for the flag points, which every... Uh, so can't it. The flag points, which were on all the standard figures in one form or another, you had to have so many flag points and so much money, and you could get the mail away offers. And basically, what they would often be is vehicles and figures that hadn't been out for a couple years. So you could, you know, hey, I missed that figure, or I uh, my um, tank broke, I want a new one. You could order it um, through the mail. It didn't come in, you know, the, the same packaging, it came in generic packaging, but you could get the vehicles again. And those booklets are actually pretty cool to collect as well, and I thought I had some, but I can't find any. So, sorry. <sighs> but, so as you can see, oh, here, what's this one? This is, oh no, this is another, I thought I had shown you the, latest. I think this may have been the last. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell because G.I. Joe got so weird. But this one was kind of a G.I. Joe one done trying to do a comic book feel to it. It was one of the later ones. And see on the back, I think this is what threw me off. So on the back it talks about um, a mail away offer. So but mailware offers were quite common. You don't only have um, fan club offers. I, I belong to the G.I. Joe and Transformer fan clubs at one time. They gave you some cool stuff there, which I don't have anymore. Because I remember the G.I. Joe fan club originally actually gave you a file on um, stuff to do with the figures. Stuff like, oh, give them a workout and show you how you could um, exercise them. The Transformer fan club came with a cardboard Autobot base, which is really cool. Um, that's one of those pieces I'd love to have that I don't anymore. Um, so, you know, there were, uh, uh, stuff like I'm saying, outside of the toy themselves, collectible stuff, through the fan clubs, and things like that. I still have the dog tags. I have D.I. Joe dog tags that were sent to me as part of the fan club membership. Alright, so I did find, um, a mail-away booklet like I was just talking about. So you can see here, this one has, you can get Serpentor. You can get the Cobra Patrol Unit, which is a Fang with a Strato Viper. You can get the Puller Battle Bear, the Pack Rats. Well, those things fell apart so easily. Oh, uh, the Cobra Wolf, the Cobra Adder, the Hovercraft. This is a vehicle I loved. I would love to get a hold of one of these again one of these days. Uh, the Slugger. These um, were these little micro figures they did. Apparently, you get the whole collection of them. Uh, various figures that haven't been released in a few years. The Hiss Tank, which was a necessitary... Okay, I'm going to start so in. Okay, I found um, one of those books which I was talking about. The mail away. You got Serpentor, the Fang, you know, various vehicles. Hovercraft is one of my favorite vehicles ever. I don't have one in my collection right now. I'm going to have to, one of these days, figure out how to get one because that was just awesome. Uh, but you can see it's saying $29.95 and five flag points. So, you know, a group of figures. Um, the This, I, I believe, um, the, the Cobra Ninja, that was the only way to get him. He was, basically, it's a repaint of the original Storm Shadow. It's the only way to get him. Yeah, Hawk and Iceberg, which just hadn't been um, in circulation for a few years. But you could order them now. And then in the back, it gives the stuff for the present version of the fan club, which I didn't belong to this version. This version gave you a um, specialized figure um, called the Steel, from the Steel Brigade, 
which they've done some stuff with since then, then you'd have your own file with all your information on it as if you were a G.I. Joe. So, you know, these are the mail away booklets. This is the G.I. Joe Terror on the Tundra. You know, there's a lot more to toy collecting than just the toys. And, you know, all this stuff goes with it. I'm going to do probably another episode showing packaging designs and changes in packaging because, I you know, to me, toy collecting is more than just the toys. It's a lot of the paraphernalia that goes with it that just gives you a feel of that toy line. And so, you know, what I showed you here, to me, is a sampling of some of the funner stuff. And there's so much more out there. I mean, just going through my box here, it's like, oh, yeah, I've got that. More instructions, more comics. I found... Ghost Rider comics, um, they did a whole line of Ghost Rider toys at one time, and they every figure came with the comic, and on the back of the comic was kind of their collector's thing, so I knew everything that was out there for it, but, you know, and these, this was the ones that actually told the story, from issue to issue, you had a whole story being told, so, you know, there's so many different little things like that, I'm sure there's stuff I've not covered that are out there, and, you know, I, I could do a whole thing on the Star Wars promotions they've done, but little promotional figures and stuff like that that weren't necessarily the toys, but were connected to it. A, well, there was a lot of stuff like that done, little giveaways, stuff like that. So, toy collecting goes beyond the toys themselves. That's the main point of this. Um, it, it's fun to collect the toys and play with those, but to actually find out there's so much other things that are connected to it that have a story and a history to me, you know, adds to the enjoyment of collecting. So I hope you've um, enjoyed this episode. And once more, here's the email. OpenTPackage at gmail.com. Feel free to email me if you um, got some comments. Think I'm doing this right. Think I'm wasting my time. If you're enjoying it and being inspired. You know, all that stuff is welcome. Okay, thank you.